Hey, you, I need you to hit the subscribe button below. Shalom, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. I just want to ask you a quick question, bro. Which one you think is Christ? I know the white man. You, you know the white man ain't, right? All oh, praise it. Let me, let me just prove it to you, bro. Look at the inside of that flyer. Christ looks just like you. You are God on this earth, okay? But we've been lied to. We, our, our grandmothers, our grandmothers were lied to. Our parents were lied to. Let's get the image of Christ for the brother. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. He said his head and his hairs were white like wool. What type of people got woolly hair? If you don't mind, if you don't mind, what's your name, by the way? Andrew. Andrew, take off your hat real quick, if you don't mind. Touch your hair, bro. That's woolly hair. That's hair like wool. This this guy, you we know damn well this guy. You telling me this guy got hair like wool? Yeah, he got Hell no. We see that in the passion of Christ. This guy is a liar. Read on. As white as snow. White as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine. Go ahead. And his feet, like and his feet. Now, if you had sandals on, because you know when Christ was walking the earth, they had no Timberlands or Jordans back then. So Christ had on sandals, they were able to see the top of his feet. Now, you would agree the top of your feet is the same color as the rest of your body, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he looks at his feet, go ahead. And his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So fine brass, the color of brass is brown, like a penny, like coffee, okay? And you take that same brown. If, yo, Yo, you ever burnt toast? You ever burnt toast in the oven? Now, a white piece of bread, what color does that get if you leave it too long in a toaster? Black. It black, right? And that's just a toaster. A, a, a furnace is way more hotter than a toaster. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so the Bible is letting us know that Christ is a dark-skinned man. You know what I'm saying? So now you can share this information with your people, yeah. to, your, to your aunties, to your uncles. You know what I'm saying? And they may look at you weird. They may, they may disagree with you. Oh, it's, a, it's impossible to tell them. You know? How you going to tell them that? You know what I'm saying? We don't yeah. know what time it is. Let me get First Peter four. Let me get First Peter four and twelve. But be prepared for this. I want to show you a scripture because don't think it's strange when they disagree with you. They gonna tell you that it don't matter what Christ look like. So if it don't matter, what? Why? Oh yeah, yeah. Feel free, bro. Take a picture. Yeah. Let me let me stand it up for you so you can take a good picture. Just stand it up for the brother so you can take a picture. All right. So we're going over. Um, read that again. Go ahead. Uh, first, first Peter. Yep. The book of First Peter, chapter four and verse twelve. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. So don't think it's strange. I think uh, verse four is what I want. Verse four. Verse four. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So they gon' they gonna look at you strange when you tell them that Christ is a black man. But don't think it's strange when they walk around speaking evil of you. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? As Christ has said, the first ones that are gonna turn on you 
is your own family members first. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to tell you that Christ's color don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. D did you get your picture yet? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. And you know, it's not their fault. It's not their fault because, you know, let me get Isaiah 29, 13. You know, today is Columbus Day, right? The Hispanic, when Christopher Columbus came, they, he enslaved the Hispanics first, even before the blacks. You know what I'm saying? So we're the same people that went through the same type of slavery, the same type of oh, yeah. atrocities. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Came on the same ship. Exactly, exactly. Uh, verse 19, um, 20, 28, 13, I'm sorry, or 29, 13. Uh, let me know when you get the picture, all right? I'll, so now I want to show you, like like you said, um, it's not their fault that they learned that. Now, the, the, we're going to show you where they learned it from. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth. We don't see no more people in the, in the, in the Baptist church than black folks. We don't see no more people in the Christian church than blacks and Latinos. So he said, go ahead. And with their lips do honor me. So us as a people, we honor God with our lips. We say that we love God, but the majority of our people, they won't do nothing that this Bible says. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. We have removed our hearts. We have removed our mind far from God, far from the commandments of God. Go ahead. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of man. Young man, how you doing? I want to ask you, what... What does Jesus Christ right, look I like? You, I got you, I got you. All praises, bro. I appreciate it, bro. So we're going over. You think that looks like Christ? Okay, what would you say? Oh, God, I just want the the, the dark-skinned one? Yes. You think that looks like Christ? Okay, now, we're going to pray process of elimination. Give me five minutes of your time. Y'all believe in the Bible? Yeah. Okay, so let me get... um. Let me get Acts 5 oh, yeah, and 30. We ought to obey God rather than men. Right. Acts 5, 29. Okay? Now, I'm going to read this one scripture, and then we're going to get wow. the image of Christ right. according to what the Bible says. Not what America or the news says or what school says, according to what the Bible says. Not even according to what the church says, because we already know we see this image in church. We never see a black Christ in church. Never. Okay? Acts 5, 29. The book of Acts, chapter 5, in verse 29 then Peter and the other apostle answered and said we ought to obey God rather than men we ought to what obey God rather than men so the Bible says we're gonna obey God rather than men so meaning we're gonna obey the we're gonna we're gonna believe what the Bible says and not what we say okay so now let's go to what the Bible says and see what Christ actually looks like okay Revelation 1 and 1 the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1 uh-huh the Revelation of Jesus Christ. So what's another word for revelation? Revelation. Answer that. Huh? Oh, okay, read it again. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning the revealing. If I reveal something to you, that means I'm showing it to you, okay? So the revealing of Jesus Christ, okay? Now verse 14, now we're going to get the description because you said Christ looks like the, the dark skin image and you said Christ looks like this guy, right? Okay, go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Said his hair, the hair on his head and his hairs, his beard, were white like wool. Now what people on this earth have woolly textured hair? Touch your hair. That's woolly hair. Touch your hair. That's woolly hair. That's thick. We, could, we, we may know it as nappy, afro type hair. Okay? The Bible says Christ had that type of hair. Ain't no white people walking around with an afro. Nah, the, the, the images that we see here with Christ, he got stringy hair, dog hair, lassie hair. All right, go ahead. As white as snow. Uh huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh huh. And his feet. And his feet. Now, if I, if I look at your, the top of your feet, you got sandals on. Because remember, if you take your socks off and show the top of your feet, it's going to be the same color as the rest of your body, right? Because yeah. during the time of Christ, there wasn't no, there wasn't no Timberlands or nothing like that. There wasn't no Jordans when Christ was around. So they was able to see his feet. And the top of his feet look exactly like his, the top of his body. Go ahead. And his feet like a fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. What color is brass? Brown, right? Like, co like coffee, 
like a penny, okay? So you take that same brass. My brother, did you know Christ was a black man? You do know that. Well, stick around. I want to prove it to you. That's what I'm proving to my brothers right here. Join us, man. Yeah, man. This is this is information. I just want to show you. So you know what? When, when you leave from here, you can you can tell everybody that you've been lied to. Because we know damn well this ain't Christ. I'm trying to show my brother right here and prove to him that this ain't Christ. Because my brother right here in the middle, he said that Christ was a black man. Now, remember, we said we got to obey God rather than men. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to believe what the Bible says and not what we say. So his it bronze again. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now I want to ask y'all, y'all ever made toast? Y'all put y'all got a toaster? Yeah. Um, what kind of toast y'all like? Wheat or white bread? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So let's say white bread, right? Wonder bread, right? So if you take that wonder bread and you leave it in the toaster for too long, what color does that white bread turn? It, is, it, is, it, is it exactly brown or is it a little bit darker than brown? Darker than brown, right? So Christ's feet is if they burn in a furnace. So now... We know that a furnace, or for lack of better words, a furnace will be like a fire pit, okay? If you throw something in a fire pit, now we know a fire pit is a lot hotter than a toaster that we put our bread in. So if a toaster is able to turn our bread black, if a toaster is able to turn our white bread black, how much more darker would it be if you put something in a furnace? Would it be lighter or would it be even darker, darker? So the Bible's letting us know that Christ is maybe even darker than you, my brother. Christ was a very dark-skinned man, according to the Bible. Okay? This is what we have to because I, I know y'all see about I know y'all see all the time. Black on black crime. Another black man gunning another brother down. Killing somebody over a pair of Jordans. Y'all see that all the time. Y'all in high school? Y'all see fight? Y'all ever see fights? Kids fighting over sneakers? Black on black crime? The brother hating each other? You know what I'm saying? It's because we don't see Christ, the black Messiah, in one another. So now, when we see this image, and just look at y'all. Y'all heard about the, 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 the cop that killed George Floyd? He's out. He's a free man. Y'all know that? He's a free man. You know what I'm saying? If, the, if, if it was a black man that killed a, a, a white cop, that brother would have been on the death penalty by now. He wouldn't even have the opportunity to bail out. But the thing is, when we see this man gun down our brothers, Sandra Bland, George Floyd with the knee on the neck, we think that Jesus killed us. Because in our mind, we've been taught that Jesus is white. You know what I'm saying? That's the slave mentality, you know? And what we're trying to do to you young men, let me give our first Timothy, first Timothy four and 12, okay? Because the same information that y'all have in your hand, y'all might share it to your other brothers. Y'all may have cousins, aunties, nieces, nephews, or whatever, uncles. Y'all might share this information to them and they may look at you like you strange. They may look at you because you young. Ah, oh, you young, you don't know what you're talking about. But guess what, you do know what you're talking about. And you got, you. what you're learning right now, you, you're learning more information now than you ever learned when going to church with grandma. You know what I'm saying? Check this out. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Uh-huh. Let no man despise thy youth. Let what? Let no man despise thy youth. The Bible says, let no man despise your youth. Let no man despise the youth, the young, the teenage men, the young prophets of God, the young men that got woolly hair, the young men that look like Christ, the black Messiah. Let no man despise you. Go ahead. But be thou an example of the believers. So you got to be an example of the believers. You got to make sure you ain't hanging out with the wrong crowd. You got to make sure that you ain't trying to have multiple girlfriends and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got any girlfriends? No. Nah? Don't have any girlfriends, okay? Don't let, no man despise that youth. I'm gonna show you guys, let me get Exodus 22, 16. Okay? When y'all get older, and y'all even have the thought of having a girlfriend, I wanna show you what God says, okay? You shall not lie with women. Say, say that again? You should not lie with someone who doesn't marry you. Ah, you smart, bro, you on it. You on it, you smart. Guess what? 50 year old men don't understand that. 
You got 50 year old men still sagging their pants. 50 year old men getting drunk on the corner, yes. trying to talk to little 20 year olds. This man's 50 years old, she's 20, he's trying to make her his girlfriend. I'm gonna say what you just say, what you just said again? You shall not lie with that sister and what else? If, if you're not married to her, right? All right, go ahead. The book of Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid, that is not betrothed. So you entice a girl, you talk to her, you say the right things to her to make her your girlfriend, right? Go ahead. And lie with her. You have laid down in the bed with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. That's exactly what you said. He shall surely endow that woman to be his wife. Okay? That's why we have a proving stage. Let me get Hebrews 13 and 4. Okay? Because marriage is what's honorable. There is no boyfriend and girlfriend. There's no such thing of that. Boyfriend and girlfriend is fornication. Boyfriend and girlfriend is sin. Okay? All, 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 all the men want, and especially men, yeah, hey, how old are y'all? 18? How old are you? 15, all right? I have a daughter that's 16, okay? Y'all are young men, but y'all are smart young men, okay? Like we said before, don't let no man despise thy youth. So you was on point. We can't lay down with a sister. We have to, mar we have to marry first and then have sex, okay? The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Last scripture. Marriage is honorable in all. So God says marriage is honorable. I know y'all may be too young to get married, but just this is something y'all can keep in your mind. Maybe two, three years from now, when you become 21 and you see a woman that you like you know that i can't have sex with this woman until i marry her read that again from the top marriage is honorable in all marriage is honorable because god ordained it from the beginning okay from genesis that was the first marriage with adam and eve go ahead and the bed undefiled the bed is undefiled meaning whatever you do with your wife behind closed doors is your business the bed is undefiled between a husband and a wife not a boyfriend and a girlfriend but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. How does God judge them? By giving them diseases, okay? Or oh, he can skip the disease, and now, and now a man is banging out some man's wife, he comes home from work, and boom, he blasts him right in the head. You know, God, whoremongers, we see that all the time on the news. Um, about a year ago, there was a man who cheated on his wife, and he got set up, killed in a hotel room. You know, he went out of town, he lied to his wife saying, I'm going out of town to do work, to do business. Boom, he ends up getting caught on hotel cameras and he ends up getting and shot up and killed for, for trying to have a menage a trois in a hotel room. You know, these are the footsteps that you guys don't want to follow. Teach this to your young brothers. If you got little sisters, protect them. Don't allow your little sisters to go out here, movie nights, you know what I'm saying? A, a whole group of boys, you know what I'm saying? Don't allow that you know y'all got any questions what is this this is who we are according to the Bible what you see here is the 12 tribes of Israel okay these names right here we're not gonna find in the Bible God calls us the names that you see on this side right here okay I'm sorry say it again well you okay uh, let me get numbers 118 I'm going to show you that we're not more than one, okay? We're only what our father is. What determines our nationality is based upon our fathers, okay? And I'm going to prove it to you. The book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. Uh -huh. And they yeah. assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigree. So their pedigree is like their bloodline, their lineage. Go ahead. After their families uh -huh. by the house of their fathers by the house of their fathers it didn't say the house of their mothers it said the house of their fathers because their father plants the seed now the word for seed is sperm okay that's when our parents lay down together our father has the seed and then our, our, our mothers become pregnant and then we come forth so your nationality is determined based on your father so do you know who your father is do you know his nationality what would you say his nationality is Levi, okay, so you, uh, Ephraim, okay, so, all right, your father will be a so-called Puerto Rican, okay, we don't read Puerto Rican in the Bible, the Puerto Rican people are in the Bible, but God doesn't call them by that name, okay, God calls them Ephraim, the, the prophet Joshua, who came after Moses, was also Ephraim, he would also be a so-called Puerto Rican, okay? We have many of our forefathers who were strong. The, uh, the prophet Hosea, okay, was also a Puerto Rican, okay? Let's get Matthew 26. 
okay? So we're gonna we're gonna shut it down. There's a lot more. We got a website. We got YouTube videos for more information on this, okay? Because we can't give you everything all in one shot. We gotta give you little by little, and you do your own research after you leave, okay? You used to scream black power while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.